Hello, how are you? I'm living on the moon. I'm calling from a telephone inside of a saloon. The only other person here left many years ago. And now I sit here at the bar. I haven't walked the planet round, but still the thing I'm looking for refuses to be found. Except this clanging deep grip. Oh, I am such a fool. A man who wanted quiet, so he went up to the moon. But now this precious solitude I once thought so sublime has changed my sense of what is real and what is in my mind. I think I hear. Of my distant family, the laughter of my oldest friends, the years I haven't seen. I know that that's impossible, I tell myself each day, but no one stops this growing sound that will not go away. But no one comes here for me, which was my own. There's nothing left but dust, dreams, and memories and time. Hello, how are you? I heard you on. Why you went up there? It's very strange of you. Now we all know that you're the kind of person who must find the things that keep you up at night and occupy your mind. But tell me, do you think that you can do it all alone? The answer must be no, or else you. Why don't you come down to earth? You know that we miss you. It's been so long since you've been gone up there on the
got to stand up strong. Face the truth about themselves to understand what went wrong. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for being with me. I do appreciate it. It is amazing. You can get it more by calling 888-775-3773. 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E. JESSE. My biblical question for this week. My biblical question. And it's a doozy. My biblical question, what connects you with the physical world? What connects you with the physical world? Amazing question. And again, they're put there to encourage you. And I, and I realize most people are not. So, but they're put there to encourage you to think for yourself. To know that you know that you know that you know, and not because somebody else said it. I don't care who that somebody else is. You can know that you know that you know that you know. And the way you know that you know that you know without trying to know. Isn't that amazing? You can't put effort in knowing. That's mind-blowing. So the biblical questions, questions are there to encourage you. We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on com slash show. com slash show. And you can, well, if you are, like, busy running around, going to work or at work, and you can't watch the show live, or land up at a beach, or or you're just getting home because you're drunk from late last night and you can't watch it, you just ain't no be eyes to watch it. You could be listening to it on your iPhone, iPad, to the show here by calling the listen time listen line uh on Talk Stream Live at 641-793-1500. Six four one seven nine three one five zero zero, and it's amazing. And to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee dot com slash jlp. Buymeacoffee dot com slash jlp. A bond jlp cash app. Oh, buymeacoffee.com slash JLP talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP talk or bond JLP on Cash App. Bond JLP on Cash App. So it is Tuesday again. And for all the listener who new listener who might not realize yet, we every Tuesday is, let me tell you this first, it's country and western Tuesday because I grew up in Alabama during an amazing time of America. And when I was growing up down in Alabama on the plantation, we couldn't get 
any kind of music for a while, but country and Western music. So I came to really appreciate country and Western music. Eventually, we were able to get all kinds of music, but I came to appreciate country and Western music, and it is amazing. So every Tuesday is Country and Western Tuesday. Ah, bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to me. What the? What the? Who let the dogs out? (laughs) Amazing. Amazing. It is amazing. I was having a very interesting conversation with someone yesterday after, at the end of the day, after office hour. And I asked, they were talking about, they had gone down, they had been saved by Jesus, and that they had gone down to the front of the church. You know how in the, in those churches they have a, a open church? At the end of the service, they open up the house, whatever they call it, and they ask you to come down and let me pray for you and accept Jesus. And a whole bunch of people, all depending on the size of the church, go down to the front and accept Jesus. And um, and they ask you one one or two questions, maybe three. Do you believe Jesus died on the cross? Yes. You're crying to hold up your hand at the time, by the way. Do you believe he rose again for you? Yes. Do you believe you were saved at the cross? Yes. You are now a Christian, a child of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sign your name on the book and become a member of the church. All right? And they were telling me how easy that was and how easy that is. And then they heard my show and me say that you have to die in order to live. If you want to become a Christian, a real one, you got to be born again of the Father. You must forgive Go face your mother, forgive your mother for turning you away from your father, and forgive your father for uh, not protecting you from your mother. And, and then they heard me say, you must die, and not you must die, but the fate you, the ego nature, the old nature, which is not you but it's of your father, the devil. You must die in order to live. In order to have life, you must give up a life. And they're talking spiritual, not physical, right? And, uh, and so they, they tried it. They're like, wow. And then the first thing they had to do was to realize that they really did hate their mother. They were angry at mama, but they didn't know they were angry at mama. And then once they really saw for themselves that they were angry at mama for imposing her will on them, being all mama and and smothery and and making them identify with her without realizing what was going on, they realized that they did. They do have anger for their mother. And so they realized they had to go and forgive. And they talked about how difficult and scared adults now I'm talking about this this person is an adult and they were saying how how scared they were and it took them a while to to really do that to go and forgive their mother but they finally did it even though they were afraid and it was so hard to do it And so they finally did it. And they went and talked to the father. And then they heard me say, you can die. You got to die now. 
of the ego. You're not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. You're not your bodies. You're not your body. You're not your ideas. You're not your plans. You're none of those things. And so they tried that for a while, and that they say, uh-uh, this is too hard. I can't do this, they say. I can't do this, they say. And so they went back to being the other kind of Christian. <laughs> it was so funny. They were like, it's easier just going down to the front of the church and accepting Jesus accepting Jesus and doing nothing else about it. Isn't that amazing? But they would tell me now they're in a quantum. You know what a quantum is? I've heard of quantum. Quantum. What what does that mean? (laughs) Like in a... uh, Like in a pickle. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, because now they know about the other way, this hard way versus this easy way of doing nothing and nothing happening, right? And so now they don't know what to do because now they can't relax. Excuse me, they can't relax with the idea of not working on themselves since they know now there's something to work on. So they don't know what to do. Isn't that amazing? And so they don't know what they're going to do. So I just said, whatever. <laughs> it, it is a trip, a journey, overcoming that old nature. You so... T- so identify with it and tie it to it. But, and so you got to work on you, right? You got to work on you. Hassan, what am I seeing on my horse on the film? Oh, I think that's just like uh, <laughs> some of the reins. Uh, it, it's like gray. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know, he's got reins. I don't, I don't see it here, but I see it there. And it's fine. I'm just wondering what was it. Oh yeah, I don't. I think it's just some uh, some of the <laughs> handlebars. Oh my horse here, for I see like, well I know I see this, but there are two gray things on the side. Oh no, I don't see that. You don't see that? Uh uh-uh. uh Oh, what's up? <laughs> but I I didn't want to put a hat on him today because I wanted to show the Amerifro. Oh no, nah, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Amerifro. That's right. Amerifros unite. I'm growing the Amerifro back for now. <laughs> and see what happened. But anyway, that was an amazing story. And I want to put it out there because a lot of Christians have gotten, a whole lot, nearly everyone really, have gone down to the front of the church to accept Jesus. That is so easy, but nothing is happening except your mind deceive you to make you think you have accepted Jesus. <clears throat> but nothing changes in your life. Isn't that amazing? Yes, Jesse, that's amazing. It's just food for thought. I talk to a lot of people about a lot of things. I, um, I have said over and over and over again, that human beings, human beings are animals. Human beings are animals. Human beings are evil and cannot be trusted. It is crazy, but I understand, it, and it's not. It's that wicked heart. It's that evil heart. And I didn't see the depths or knew the depths of what a human being can do to one another. And they could get pure pleasure out of not only living in their own hell 
and bring in love into hell that is put upon them. But they love the hell that's put upon others. And I understand now, I don't know even the depths of the understanding that will come of never trusting a person with anger. An angry person has the heart and nature of pure evil. If you doubt me, get to know yourself and see what you have done and what you what controls you. But look at your family and see how they treat one another. The dishonesty, the gossiping, the deception, the joining forces against one another. Look at your so-called friends, how you treat one another. And then you justify your treatment because, oh, well, they did it to me, or this or that. And the Christians are as bad as the non-Christian because the heart has not changed. Just because you went down to the front of the church and intellectually accepted Jesus, your heart didn't change. You're still evil. Human beings are evil. And when you get to see it in yourself and start to overcome it, you're going to see clearly what's in all human beings, and you're going to deal with it. You're protected. But if you can't see what's in you, you're not going to see what's in others. And you won't know how to deal with it. I want to give you an example of evil human beings. And this is like a big example but I'm talking about little things in your lives, in your family lives, in your so-called friend lives. It is amazing to see. Another thing that is amazing for me to see is other human beings laughing at other human beings' misery. I've seen it in a big way with the Donald Trump situation, but I see it in other ways outside of Donald Trump or government. But I've been seeing how, in a big way, big time way on film and in the media, how human beings have been rejoicing in the misery or what they think is the misery of Donald Trump. They thought, they rejoiced when they thought that he was going to lose his business in New York, the Trump Tower in New York. They were rejoicing when they thought that that evil female, Letitia James, I think her name is, was going to march down over there and lock up his business. And she was like, stone pleasure with it. That's evil. We were all created, Letitia James, yeah, thank you. We were all created in the image of God. And when you treat one another in this way, You're nailing Christ to the cross. You're, you're killing him again. Anyone that has anger is nailing Christ to the cross again. You're killing Christ. When you mess with human beings in that way, we are to love one another. Our enemy, love your enemy. If you don't, you hate Christ. You hate yourself. When you rejoice in another person's misery, you're hating yourself. And you're hating Christ. You're hating God. It's crazy to see it, but I'm grateful to be seeing it. And you can see it too if you overcome the hell inside of you. And you can overcome the hell. Because the hell inside of you is not you, but you think is you. I want to give you a quick example of human beings being animals. This is from Fox. Some of you may have heard yesterday, April 1, 2024, there was a 20% increase in minimum wage. This is from Fox. California, California's new law boasting a uh, boost in the minimum wage for fast food workers in the state to $20 an hour 
went into effect Monday. It went to $20 an hour fast food workers yesterday on Monday, impacting restaurants that have at least 60 locations nationwide. Why is this from Fox? Know that this has already started. Number one, he signed it into law in September. By October, Pizza Hut had announced 1,200 plus layoffs. Roundtable Pizza, another franchisor in California, had laid off uh, Starbucks employees, who, by the way, total compensation package around $30 an hour. They had already closed seven stores. They're going to have more layoffs. Uh, Uber drivers, uh, DoorDash, and all of them will pay a price. Restaurants are already squeezed, and he's basically killed. But the people that get laid off then collect because the businesses had to pay unemployment compensation to the state, which means the taxpayers get to make up the difference. His buddy, Greg Flynn, high school buddy, Gavin Newsom's friend who got an ex uh, exemption because he's a bread maker for Panera. Well, at least he got rid of that because it was too publicly embarrassing. But what this is is idiotic forced uh, value on the cost of labor, which is anti-free market, anti-capitalist, and the real results are thousands of people have already lost jobs and more will lose jobs and customers will have to pay the difference. Amazing. That's evil. This, though, that is an example of human beings treating each other like animals. They don't care that, first of all, small businesses like that cannot afford afford to hire people they must lay off because they can't afford $20 an hour. And then they don't care that the people who are getting laid off will pay the price for it. Uh, the government don't care. And the, the government has no business determining what you should pay your private business should pay employees anyway. But they don't care. They don't care that you're going to lay it off. They don't care that the uh, businesses will shut down. They don't care about anything but themselves. The ones who are making these decisions that tell small business what they can do, they're taking care of themselves. They make buku money. They live high on the hog. And they're doing just fine. They don't care what you're feeling. That's evil, that's animal nature, that is human nature. Human nature is animal nature without love. They don't care. As long as they get a thrill of, uh, of thinking that they have some type of control over you. And then they're bringing in these machines to take the uh, place of human workers. Isn't that amazing? While they're going to be, these people making the decisions, they're going to have jobs. Now they're going to replace your job with a machine. They don't care. And the unions, excuse me, the unions, that has convinced employers or employees that you need a union. And the union is looking out after you. You need to be making more money. And the employees agree because sounding good, making more money, but the union's not going to tell you you're going to lose your job. And also, if you don't lose your job, your union dues will go up. Which means more money to the unions to support to not only raise their salaries and have a great parties and union driving cars without having to pay for them, all kind of stuff, right? You're paying for that. And then they're voting in polit supporting politicians that you don't even agree with. But you think you got something because they said you need to make more money. But you're not making more money. You may make $20 an hour now, but by the time you pay union dues and all that other stuff, you're back in the same spot. And it's because you don't think for yourself. You do not think for yourself. You let everybody else think for you. 
and you don't even know how you don't know how not to think for yourself in the right way so you can know what's right. Prices will increase even more. So twenty dollars an hour it's just it's a setup to get power and control over you. Fox Business is reporting that executives at McDonald's, McDonald's and Chipotle, Chipotle Mexican Grill have already indicated menu prices, price hike, heights are coming. But you think you're making twenty dollars more? You're making money. You're not. Unions are doing it for control over you. So they can take your money and go and, and support politicians that you don't agree with. And most of the time, it's Democrat politicians. I used to work for a union. I know this for a fact. It's not hearsay. Employees will be pay, laid off. Fox Business is important. Southern California PISA, PISA announced layoff of around 841 drivers across the state. Roundtable Pizza said it planned to lay off around 73 delivery, delivery drivers. But they, these are animals. Husband and wife treat each other like animals. Parents treat their children like animals. Mothers go to work and they are married, don't have to go to work. They treat their children like animals. Oh, send me to a daycare center. I don't care. I got to go get my ego thrill. I don't feel like raising children. According to KMPH, employees at Foster Freeze are out of job, out of a job. Assistant General Manager Monica Navarro says she was called Monday morning only to find the lock. Lots were being changed. Watch this from MP, KMPH. We went into the work this morning. Um, I, my coworkers went in and they came up, they drove up and there was a locksmith there. He was changing all the locks and the owner was there and he basically said that the store is shutting down and gave all of us our last checks. Didn't give us any type of notice. I talked to Lauren and he was basically saying how he knew that he wasn't going to be able to afford the $20 pay increase. And I guess just didn't want to tell us that he wasn't going to be able to afford the $20 increase. Please be nice to your fast food workers. They're going to be getting their hours severely cut, running small, small shifts. They're going to have people yelling at them for the menu increases. Please be nice to your fast food workers. They are trying their best. Amazing, huh? Human beings in that fallen state do not have love. Human beings are evil. And anyone tell you that human beings have love, human beings have love, they're lying to you. There's no love. Love comes from above. And how many people get getting love from above? You can count them on one hand. You must return to the Father. 888-77-53-773. 888-77-JESSE. There's, uh, there are two lines open. When I come back, your phone calls and super chats and all that. Amazing. Human beings don't have love. I didn't know that in the beginning. I know it now. books that are amazing. I highly recommend you get them. Seven Guaranteed Steps to Spiritual, Family, and Financial Success Guide. Even if you're not starting a business, but you have a job. 
on your welfare. It can help you if you do. Be doers of the word, all right? From rage to responsibility, from rage. That's what I write about in the first chapter, especially how I overcame. Scam, how the black leadership exploits black Americans. They are using them, and blacks are too willing to be used. And then my last book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. They are all amazing books, and they are helpful. Go to rebuildingtheman.com if you want an autograph copy or call 800 411 2663. Amazing. I did not know the depths of the evil of human hearts. You can know. You can be free in spite of what's happening around you. You can be free from it. Or you can stay in your hell and suffer. It's up to you. It is really up to you. To to put small businesses out of business. To put workers out of work, human beings out of work. And then you're up here making these decisions for these people. They have been hurt by it, and you're getting the thrill of, being, of hurting them. It's pure evil. It's pure evil. Let me just lay you out just other things about this layoff to show you human beings are evil. There's not one that's good. Em- employees will be replaced by machines. A machine don't eat. A machine don't cry. A machine don't have children. A machine don't have a family. A machine have no need for life. And they are getting rid rid of people who have been created in the image of God, right? Human beings. All for thrill and all for to control you. They're putting you in a camp of socialism and you're so blind you can't even see it. And some human beings vote for these things. The union could not do it to the employees if the employees didn't vote for it. But they hear, oh, you're getting $20. They're thinking, stop right at that point. They don't sit and say, well, well, How would that benefit me? Will I still have a job? Will prices go up? Will my union dues go up? What would happen if I vote for this? It's interesting, California at one time was a red state, and California was amazing, really was. And then they convinced the people, oh, really? you, you know what? Your life is too good. We need to control you. You need this. You need to think this way. You need to be this way. Come vote for us, blue people. And the people did it. And look what we have now. Employees will be replaced. This is from KTLA. El Polo Loco told investors it will begin automating some of its salsa making. 
We don't need you human beings to make salsa anymore. We got to use machines now. You're laid off. It would begin salsa making, and Jack in the Box is testing fryer, fryer robots and automated drinking dispensers to re, re, rely on fewer, fewer employees. I was when I was realizing this last night. I was thinking how. I was thinking how. Um, there was a time when I was growing up, a lot of people were farmers, and it was a pleasure to live on the farm and grow your own food and and go to the cotton mill and sell your cotton and make money and go and buy your own groceries, or just pick up your groceries after fields, out the fields. They convinced most people to get rid of your farms and move to the big cities. And now they have done that, and now they're being controlled. Now they're telling you, you got to take the bus to work. You can't even have a certain car. We got to make trains or uh, tram track things so that you can ride. We're going to make electric cars. You can't even have a gas car. I'm being told that in Pasadena, California, it has its first fully automated restaurant. Something called the Cali Express. <laughs> Amazing. And you know what this is doing for a lot of people? It's making them lazy. It's making them not want to work, especially young people. Because my age, we grew up wanting to work. That's all we knew was to work. And it was made sense to work. If you don't work, you don't eat. But the government said, you don't have to work now. We'll take care of you. And the young people more that happen to do that, some of them, a lot of them. Not knowing that in every human being, you came into this world, you were born into this world with something that's already inside of you that if you work, you will deal with issues in the right way, you would develop into that a God-given talent to take care of yourself. But most people don't know that because they, from the moment they pop out of mama's womb, they're given a cell phone, they're given free everything because mama ain't got time to raise you. And so you never discover your real self. People don't want to work anyway. And it's been set up and planned that way for years now in order to control you. New York Post, this is from the New York Post, or Reddit, Reddit, the anti-work subreddit is one of the most active pages. People post texts and emails, screenshots for quitting their jobs. Isn't that something? The real heroes are so-called idlers who stay in the job, doing the absolute minimum to get by while still collecting a paycheck. They stay, but they're trouble because they're doing the absolute minimum work. All they want is a paycheck. Human beings are evil. Human beings are animals. The rule is that you got to love one another. Love your neighbor. Ask yourself, where's the love in that? Somebody to hire you to do a job, you make a promise, you're going to do your best. Give me this amount, I'll do my best. Watch this from Fox. Why do you like the idea of being home, not working, but still getting paid by corporate America? How many hours is, is you know, a solid work day in, in your ideal right. society? Uh, 
Sure. I mean, I think as much as people want, we want to reduce the amount of work that people feel like they they're forced to to do. Leave people still want to do things. They just want to do things where they feel rewarded and they feel like they're in a good spot in their life uh, and that their job respects them and stuff like that. Um, so I would like less work hours. Um, and what I do you do, Doreen? Feel, uh, I'm a dog walker. A dog walker. <laughs> May God have mercy on the young generation. They have no sense of individuality. The boy, the men and the women, the boys and the girls. What a mess! It's a battle between good and evil. I've told you, I've been saying this for years and not taking credit for it. I've just been telling you that. It's not about white or black. It's not about racism. It's not about sexism. It's not about homophobism or lesbianism. Lesbianism. It's not about white supremacism. It's not about anti-Semitism. It's good versus evil. It is truly that and nothing else. It's not about Depression is not about suicidal thoughts. It's not about loneliness and fear. And that what fear is evil. It's good versus evil. Practical fear, looking both ways before you cross the road or not going into a bad neighborhood, you should have that. But that's, that's different. It's about and if you get to know yourself, really, really pay attention to you, you're going to see that you have, from the moment you popped out of your mama's womb and she traumatized you by imposing her will on you, whatever that will was, and turning you away from your father, you fell away from love and woke up to hate. And you call hate love. You call evil good. And then the children of the lie, they help cover up evil so they can control you. But if you pay attention to you, yourself, look within and live from within, you can't be controlled. My country is gone. It's no longer tears of thee. It's gone because human beings are evil, I mean, wicked like I've never seen before. They have destroyed the family so the father and mothers are no example. I challenge you, except for the mother that has, is working on herself to overcome the hell in her, Find a mother that loved their children. One mother on this earth, roam the earth, and find one mother that truly loved the man's children. Find one. Except for those, and I'm not talking about the ones who heard the message of forgiveness. Go and forgive your mother, forgive your father, return to your father. I'm talking about the ones that don't know about that yet. Let me go to Ivory, a first time call out of Wisconsin. Ivory, welcome to the welcome to the show. You're on the air. Ivory, 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 are you on mute? Okay, I'm gonna put Ivory on hold and let Sean take. Cause she's been waiting a while. Jay is the first time call out of Wisconsin. Hey, Jay, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse, how's it going? All is well, Jay. Yeah, I just had a question because I feel like um, I've been like an angry person for like the, I don't know, I guess last couple of years. Uh, 
I can give you like a little background. My my like dad had cancer and then he like passed away and I felt like my dad was like my best friend, but I feel like I, I like I, I hold some sort of like anger, I guess, for maybe him passing or something like that. I mean, I know I'm still like sad and stuff, but I was just trying to like wonder if you had any like insight or suggestions on maybe like how to overcome it. So you're angry because he is far? I think so. I mean, that's the only thing I could, I mean, I know like angry and sad, but I just feel like, like even before he passed away, like I was just like, like more of an angry person. Yeah. Like I think, but like, I just, you know, even my, like my wife said it too. So it's just like, I've just been on like a, I don't know how to call it like a weird, I guess like a weird journey. And Your wife said what? Like, uh, that I was, like, even, like, been a little bit more angrier than, like, what I had, like, used to be. Just, like, more angry and distant. But, I mean, I guess, I mean, that's, like, normal with, you know, I guess going through. What's normal? Well, like, if you, like, lose a family member, I guess. So it, maybe. It's normal maybe to be you, angry or sad that you lost a family member? I, I would think so, right? I mean, I don't, I don't <laughs> know. That's, how, that's, 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 that's just how I feel, I mean, personally. How, how long ago did your father spar? Um, he's been gone for like two years now. Oh, okay. So. Uh, um, and so I want you to know your anger did not begin with that situation. You were already angry. Okay. And then, That's what I thought too. Yeah. Okay. And that situation was just another shock. And because you were angry, you overreacted to that situation as well. Okay. So do you want to overcome anger? Yeah, I would love that. I would love to know how to do that. Okay, number one, you, got, you now that you see that you have it, you got to forgive your mother. Your anger came from her. Okay. When you were born through her, she recreated you in her hell, in her image. And so you got to, but see it for yourself, not just because I said it. And you got to realize just as you can't help but feel the way you feel, think the way you think, feel the way you feel, overreact to things. That is the nature of your mother, which is not her nature, but it's in her, and it came from her, and, it, and she got it from her mother and her mother and her mother. And when you realize you can't help yourself, go and apologize to your mother for re- being angry at her for what she's done, and God will forgive you. Don't ask for forgiveness from anyone. You apologize for being angry at them, and God will forgive you. And he would take the spirit of the mother away from you. You, you would no longer think and feel like a woman. You would, things would change for you. But you got to forgive right. your mother. Yeah, because I just like I've been. I just started listening to your show. Like I just found out about it like a little while ago, and I know that's what you're. Uh, what you mainly say is forgive your mother. So I was kind of like working up towards that, just to you know call my mom because my mom my mom lives in another state, so. I mean, you could still call her on the phone, right? I mean, I don't yeah. have to do this in person, right? Obviously. If you can, yeah. it's best to do it in person. But if not, can you FaceTime with her? Yeah, I could FaceTime with her. I mean, I, I could even wait. I mean, No, you don't want to wait. If you can FaceTime okay. with her, FaceTime with her. And, the reason, and then let's say that she doesn't want to FaceTime. You can call her on the phone and talk to her on the phone. But if possible, it's best to be facing her so you can get your courage back. You're going to shake in your boots, but it'll be the last time you ever have to shake again. All right. I love to hear that, man. I really do. And, and then you would start to deal with your wife perfectly as well, because right now you're married to your mama. Yeah, I guess I could see how that would work out. And does your wife obey you? Yeah, she does, actually. Like, my mom is always trying to harass me because my wife doesn't work. And it's like, uh, I mean... Like, why does she have to work? I mean... Do you have children? Like I, uh, no, we don't have any kids at all. But, How long have you been married? Oh, man. Dude, we've been married for, like, uh, I think, like, four years, I think. Almost four years coming up here. Well, why you don't have children? Um, I don't... I mean, we're not too old yet, but, I mean, I guess we, we haven't bought a house or anything like that yet. We were always trying to aspire to... Like get like the house and everything first, you know. Just try to get more of like a like a stable stable type living because before we had a house, you know, children or anything like that. 
So you you guys live outside now? No, oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> what am I saying? No. I, you don't need a you don't need a house in order to have a kid. You don't need yeah. You can. Yeah, Why get, did you get like married it. before you were ready to make children? Um. Well, God, man, this is. I mean, how much time do you honestly have? I mean. <laughs> I mean, I, I love my wife and everything like that, uh, but there there came a point when she, she quit her job and, um, you know, like health insurance came a thing too. Like we didn't get married just for health insurance. Like I know, like I know this is kind of, it's, it's weird to say, but like, and then at the same time, my dad was, my dad was like dying too. And I, and I knew, like, I didn't get married because for my dad, like this is all things like things I wanted to do, but like I just wanted to, we wanted to get married and stuff before my dad passed away. So why? Kind of, I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> but, so yeah. why did you I get mean, married before you were ready for children? You said um, your wife quit her job. Did she quit her job before you married her? Uh, yeah, before I married her. And then four years later, no children. She's still not. Working well, she went. She went back to school. She went. She went to get. She went to get a master's degree. So she married you, so she could get a go and get an education without having to work. <laughs> I guess <laughs> if you look at it like that. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think about it sometimes. I guess. <laughs> you think about what? I think about that sometimes, but I don't know. You I think mean, about what sometimes? Like I, I don't think she married me because just just so that. You know, like a free ride for an education. Well, I mean, she didn't marry you to have children. She didn't marry uh, you so she could work. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, why did you get married? I don't know. That's a good point. I guess maybe because we thought that that's what two people that have been together for so long do. How old are really, you? Uh, thirty-six. Both of us. Why did you get married? I think because that's what we like thought that maybe like normal adults what adults do but now that you know i guess you put it like that that's a good point if I, I haven't put it, it like anything i'm just asking questions no i mean but if you you like if you lay it out there like that i mean it's a good point i mean what's the, the point to get married is to what have kids i guess right in a way I mean, what was the purpose of getting married you married a woman that quit her job so you said before you even married her four years later she get an education you're taking care of her. She's going to dump you. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, she she I mean, she could have already. I mean, but I guess she hasn't. She hasn't graduated yet. Oh, no, no. She's been graduated. But well, why is she not working there? I, I don't know. I don't know. I should probably what ask her that. My mom asked me that quite a bit, too. <laughs> can you hold for a minute? Yeah, I can hold. 888 7753 Seven seven three. Um, hate news, not the fake news coming up. Hate news, two more hours to go. Hate news coming up, not the fake news. I'll be back in a moment. Two more hours to go. What a mess! Back in a moment. I recommend you get a copy of my book, From Rage to Responsibility. I write about how the spirit of anger was taken away from me 29 years ago. I forgave my mother who tried to turn me away from my father, and I returned to my father, and through him, my father on earth, and through him, I was able to return to God. No man or woman can return to God unless you go through the sun. And men are sons of God. They may be weak, pathetic examples of it, but it's the spiritual order of life. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, woman over children. So get from race to responsibility. I write about that. Go to my website, rebuildingtheman.com for an autographed copy or call 800-411-BOND and donate to my nonprofit, Bond, the Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. We are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man.
A whole lot of mess going on in the world. This is the end of hour one of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It's Tuesday, April 2nd, A.D. 2024. Lines are full, guys. JLP will be right back to your calls. And we'll get to your super chats. Appreciate them. But first, fake news, not fake news. Persecution of the president. CNN, Common Nonsense Network, reports our greatest president, Donald J. Trump. They call him former president. Posted a $175 million bond yesterday, Monday. He, pe- he plans to appeal, or he's appealing, the judgment against him, the, f- the misjudgment against him. In the New York civil fraud case brought by state black female attorney general Democrat Letitia James, a win for Trump's team as the bond pauses any action that Letitia could take against his properties in response to that judgment until at least September. The bond amount was lowered by several hundred million. Remember, it was going to be like 462 million or something like that? Dollars. That's a few hundred million dollars, CNN. By a state appeals court last month, meaning in March, after Trump's attorneys argued that covering the full bond of the $464 million verdict against him was not feasible. Also Monday, shares of Trump's media company plunged after it disclosed that they lost more than $58 million and generated little revenue in 2023. Trump is the company's majority shareholder, so his net worth tumbled by more than $1 billion as a result. I guess he has a few billion to go. Uh, A storm blowing through. A severe thunderstorm dumped softball-sized hail in parts of central and eastern United States on Monday, yesterday. Forecasts show the storm will intensify today as it rumbles from the southeast to the Ohio Valley, threatening to unleash another round of dangerous conditions. So watch out, people. Abortion in Florida, one of the strictest abortion bans set to take, take effect, according to the far-left female run out Let the Skim. Yesterday, Florida's conservative-leaning, supposedly, State Supreme Court ruled that the state's constitution does not protect so-called abortion rights. No such thing. Effectively allowing Florida's six-week ban to go into effect May 1st. That's next month. The ban was signed into law last year. It includes exception for rape, incest, and uh, medical emergencies, quote-unquote. Still, the measure will eliminate almost all access, communist buzzword, to the procedure, which is a euphemism for killing the babies, right? In the South, where Florida's current 15-week ban had made the state a safe haven for abortion, (laughs) not for the babies, not for the fathers who don't want their children killed. It's not the last time that the state could see changes to their abortion law. Florida, Florida voters will get to have a say in November on whether to enshrine so-called abortion protections meaning leave the children unprotected, in the state constitution. What a mess, huh? Government is imposing informed consent on hospitals, by the way. Speaking of so-called health, the Department of Health and Human Services, total misnomer, if the federal government, according to the far-left females at the skim, is now requiring hospitals to get informed, written informed consent before performing pelvic, prostate, rectal, sorry kids, and breast exams especially if the patient is under anesthesia. I guess the reasoning is that they're having medical students do like little uh, exams so that they, they can learn, and they're forcing them to do it. I don't know. 20 states have passed laws requiring a patient's consent. Now the federal government is imposing this. I don't really get it. Many, uh, meanwhile, in Israel-Palestine, in that war drama... Israel and Palestine. The United States is close to approving the sale of up to 50 million American-made F-15 fighter jets to Israel in a deal expected worth to be worth more than $18 billion. It would amount to the largest U.S. foreign military sale to Israel since the country went to war with Hamas October 7th. The transaction underscores the extent to which U.S. continues to support Israel despite strained relationships between Evil Joe and based BB Benjamin Netanyahu. Israel... Iran has vowed to retaliate after a strike they blamed on Israel killed two of their top commanders and five officials in Syria. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP. Oh, 
got to stand up strong Take the truth about themselves To understand what went wrong I know we can find a way I know we can find a way I know we can find a way To stand up Stand up Stand up Uniting the races with truth Instead of dividing them with lies, we're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show already. That's amazing. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773, 888-77-JESSE. My biblical question for this week what connects you with the physical world? What connects you with the physical world? You ever think about that? Be in the world but not of it? What connects you with the physical world? If you're out and about breaking across the borders, uh, bringing some fentanyl in from other parts of the asshole countries, uh, or you're over here and you're robbing, carjacking, stealing and killing and whatever. You could be listening to the show. Or you live on the street and you're doing crack right now. <laughs> you could be with a needle given to you by the government. You could be listening to the show on your iPhone or iPad. And you can't say you don't have them because the government gives them to you now, especially illegal aliens. You can be listening to the show on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500. 641-793-1500. And also, you can podcast the show. When you go up to your room, your four-star hotel room, you can podcast the show. Amazing, huh? To donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Or rebuildingtheman.com. Rebuildingtheman.com. It's Tuesday. It's the second hour of the show today. It is Country and Western Tuesday. <laughs> Bring back, oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to what me. Dog? Hey. What Who the? Who let the dogs out? Woo. Amazing. 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 <laughs> I want, we're going to get to your super chats as well. I want to go back to Jay. Jay Father Spire two years ago, I think. Jay has anger. He want to know how you get rid of the anger. Jay is married, but he don't know why. He doesn't know why. Jay. Yes. Let's take this one step at a time, all right? You got it. You've been married four years. You have no children. You're married to a woman who went and got an education and now all she does is sit home, and you're taking care of her, right? Well, she she paid without a job. Well, she had like saved up her money from before, and <laughs> she I don't know. Yeah, I mean she got student loans and stuff too. I mean it's not like I like that's the only reason why I haven't you know said anything is because she still pays for at least half the stuff. Who but, yeah. did you pay for her education? Oh God, no! Her parents paid for her her education. So, I can't afford that, man. <laughs> you can't afford. I understand. Why did you yeah. get married? Why I do? I you know I don't know. I mean I love my wife. I mean that's the best. The, honestly, the best. That I love my wife, and I want to you know I want to spend spend the rest of my life with her. I mean that's like the best like you know reason I can give you. I mean. So you got married because you love your wife. Yeah. And how I do mean, you know you love your wife? 
Oh, she's she's a she's a she's a good person. I mean, she's uh from, what? from what I don't know from every experience we've had so far. I mean, it's always been a a great experience, and she's always been super supportive. And just like judging her character, she's uh she's always been like a hardworking individual, and um just I don't know. She's always seen the best in me, and you know she's got a sweetheart, and I don't, yeah, I guess that at all. Um, get along with her pretty easy. So you're not paying anything of her student loans, right? No, nothing. And so you said she was a good person. What's good about her? Um, I mean, I I, I love the fact that she's uh, like so hard, like a, such a hardworking person, and she's like she doesn't have a job. How she's hardworking? Well, I mean, well, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when she did have a job, she she <laughs> she, she hasn't like had a job thing. in four years. How she's hardworking. Well, I mean, she she worked really hard at school. I mean, she got, I mean, her grades. A I mean, monkey got, would work hard at school if you show him how to write. Yeah, I guess, man. I hated school, though, man. I yeah, mean, me too. I didn't hate I, it, but I wouldn't. I just, it. Yeah, I just wish I would have paid more attention. But anyways, yeah. And so what's good about her? Good about her? Um, I don't know. She's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> She's a lady. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a lady. She's a lady. And the lady is mine. And so what's good about her? I don't know. She listens, I guess. She listen uh, to what? She, she listens to what I say. She 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 cooks for me. I mean when I come home, I mean at least I got food and stuff made. I mean that's pretty nice. She cook and clean and earn and so? Yeah, yeah. Well, she could sew. I mean, I don't really ask her to sew very much, but I'm sort of sure if I said, hey, Lindsay, sew something for me, she would. Is she white? Yeah. Is she white? Yeah. Are you white? I'm white, too, yeah. Why don't you have some white babies? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just started talking to her about that, honestly. I mean, to tell you the truth, Jesse, like, I feel like like I'm, I'm one of them. We're, we're, we're both of them whites that don't want to have kids because of how we see the world but i like you're like i I feel like like i'm having like an eye-opening awareness where i mean i don't i'm not trying to say oh because i'm white i should have kids you know i'm not trying to you should have kids because you're white we need white babies (laughs) yeah i guess (laughs) i mean (laughs) but i mean i don't know i i don't know i've been thinking that way like more lately too like i do actually want to have a kid but i guess i should maybe have a talk with her about that about what? Yeah. Having having some kids. Why are you going to talk to her about it? Why not just make, put the baby in there and let her find out later? <laughs> 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 we need white babies. And you don't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I made kids, I never had a conversation about it. Yeah, true that, man. True that. That's, uh, I just uh, put the baby in the oven, and I told her later, a baby's in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's a, yeah, that's great advice though. Yeah, but I mean, I I don't know. I guess mostly like uh, I'll probably like a lot of this has just been me, like maybe like my my, my self doubt, maybe like you know, I don't know. Your self doubt about what? I don't know. Just probably like myself, or maybe maybe like I was. I don't know. Like I feel like um, I don't know. I almost feel like a beta at sometimes. Honestly, Jesse, Jesse. And what I'm does here. a beta feel like? At times, I, well, I don't know. Like, uh, like I know you shouldn't get your way all the time, but I feel like you know having to, I don't know, concede to like every other little like thing in life. I mean, I don't. I hang on, hang on. I got my my cat's going crazy. Um, you got a cat? Trying, yeah, yeah. Pussy okay. cat, pussy cat. I <laughs> love you. Yes, I do. Me and my pussy cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard that song, huh, sir? Oh, yeah. Not that one. <laughs> you heard that before, what's Jay? What's the other? Yeah, yeah, I heard that song. What's the other one? Pussy cat, pussy cat. I can't remember how that other one. Pussy cat, pussy cat. I love you. So, Jay, here's what I recommend for now. Just okay. start working on you. Okay. Don't make in the other, you know, like don't be dramatic and making other quick decisions. Right now, just taking one step at a time. 
I, w- I want to encourage you to start working on you. Um, I have a silent prayer, w- uh, rebuildingtheman.com slash prayer. I-, I want to recommend that you start doing that so that you can come out of your imagination, out of your okay. thoughts. And then go and forgive your mother. You can do it by FaceTime. And okay. forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother. He didn't know how to deal with her. He was, he, he was married to his mama. Because you've become attracted to what you hate. Yeah. I mean, do, I got one, just one more question for you. Do, you. do you ever suggest, like, writing letters? Like, you know, like maybe like I write a letter to my dad or something and then burn it when I'm done? Or is that not, you know? I mean, if, if it makes you feel, uh, if you want to write a letter, there's no nothing wrong with it. But just realizing right. that, what would you say in a letter? Well, I don't know. I probably just have to like uh I don't know, maybe just explain myself a little bit to him and Explain what? Just just say goodbye, I guess. I don't know. You ever said goodbye yet? No, I mean I I did say goodbye, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess forgive him too in a way. For you know, what? I mean, I guess go well, childhood wasn't always easy, but we don't have to get into that now. Right. I'm sure you want. To. He yeah, didn't tell you can talk about. He didn't protect you from your mother. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, the more and more I watch the show, and the more and more I think about it, it's like, like my mom has been a driving stem in my life of sometimes not make it easy, but I don't want to just blame her for things. But it, it makes sense. Like, well, she is to blame until you become an adult, and then you are to blame if you don't overcome it. Yeah, but she, yeah. it is I her think- fault that she created your her image. And then it's your father's fault that he didn't protect you because you're subject to them. But now you're an adult. You are responsible for overcoming the hell that's in you. Yeah. You can't blame everyone else. At this point, you recognize where it came from, but you also recognize they couldn't help it. And you start working on yourself. I'm going to encourage you to do the silent prayer morning and night and during the day. Just kind of keep your body where your mind is. But forgive your mother. Mother, I'm sorry for resenting you. You've been a thorn in my side all my life. And I realize now you can't help it. And and have no expectation from your mother. If she get mad, fine. If she cry, fine. If she blame you or your father, fine. Let her act whatever she wants to do. You forgive her. God will forgive you. And just start working on yourself. And you're starting to, you will start to, Overcome, and you will see the next step to take, and the next step to take, and the next step to take. It would be amazing. Yeah, man. Thanks, thanks for thanks for talking, and thanks for the advice, brother. And I'm gonna keep listening to you. I appreciate you. Okay, but I really want to encourage you to work on you so you can overcome the fallen state. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to call you back in a couple months too, and give you an update progress. Yeah, let me know how it go. No more beta. <laughs> Don't be a beta. No beta. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You have a good day, okay? All right. Let me know how it goes. I wish you well. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. 888-7753-773. 888-77-JESSE. Let me go to uh, Justin, a first-time call out of North Carolina. Uh, let's see here. Justin, welcome to the show. You on the air. Hey, Jesse, how are you doing? All is well, sir. Thanks for calling. Good. Look, um, I don't have a bunch of questions or anything, but I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciate you. Um, I discovered your channel on YouTube um, probably about a year ago uh-huh. or so, and it's it's just so nice hearing a, a strong conservative voice. Um, the only other ones I've really heard is like Sean Hannity and a few others that um, I teach elementary school, so I've been doing that for about 20 years. And so, um, you know, I, I work with a bunch of liberal women. Amazing. Um, so, you know, and luckily in North Carolina, it's not that bad. Um, right. But it's still, you know, it's kind of rough because I have to have to really keep my opinions to myself because, yeah, I could lose my job, essentially. Right. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't so, make sense to speak up at work like that and lose your job because they are against you and nothing is not going to help. So be wise with that. Yes, 
You're right about that. Uh, and most liberals, you can't talk sense into them. Right. Um, and, I, you know, and another thing I wanted to say is I'm, I'm just so disgusted with our president. Uh, you know, the fact that he declared Easter as National Tranny Day or whatever the hell it was, that just I just don't understand. I well, just don't get how that's how, gonna, how we have moved so far away from Christianity. They're going to do that because they're going to do that because Christianity is the best religion on this side of heaven, and it's the yeah. only religion that says you must look at yourself and be changed of the heart. You must look at that, be born again of the Father, and Christianity is hated for that reason. It says that we have to love one another, speak up, but don't hate. And Christianity is hated, and that's why they're replacing it. But the only way they're able to replace it is that the men are now weak. If the men were yeah. strong, I guarantee you, they should not, we are a Christian country. I guarantee you they could not replace Christianity if the men were strong. Yes, and just, you know, he is, Biden has completely destroyed our, our southern border. And uh, yeah. I'm just, that that part right there is just, it's just so disgusting. Well, the great They're white hope. Jobs, is, all these Im- illegal immigrants coming in and taking jobs from, from us, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's affecting every community, white white community, black community. Yeah. Uh, it's just not right. Well, it's the great not. white hope is on the way. Fret not. Help is on the way. I hope so. I really <laughs> do. And I, you know, the la- last thing I want to say is, um, you know, I told you I, I teach elementary school, and I know you've talked about in the past about fathers being absent in the home, and I can tell you this. Uh, over, the, over the last 20 or so years I've been doing this, the kids are just how do how do I say it? They're mentally disturbed, mm-hmm. and it's all because there's either no father in the home, or the father's there but he's absent. If that makes sense. I'm, yeah, uh, so, it does. So many it, absolutely. My, oh, what so a many mess. of my students, their their problem. They're so angry. Yeah, they're so. Uh, I just I, I got two boys of my own. They're fourteen year old twins and. I just thank God that that I'm available to them and have been able to been a positive uh, you know influence on them because our, our students, our, our kids are so angry and they they don't know how to how to overcome it. They don't know how to deal with it because they don't have daddy in the home and mom is either in the club or really not doing anything either. I mean, yeah, there's, yeah. there's some good single parents out there, but it's the vast majority of them don't do anything for their kids. Where are the good ones? That's a good question. <laughs> There's a few. Where? There's a few, but, uh, you know, another issue is our kids, uh, it's, we had this pandemic of, it's not just that the parent, the, the it's not just the fact that they're single parents, single moms, but we had this pandemic of grandparents raising the kids. The parents are getting younger and younger. The moms are getting younger and younger. And then the grandmas are raising raising the kids, and the, and they've already done it before. They don't know what to do now. Right. The kids are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mess, Justin, but we got to stay with it, stay with it, and we'll get it right. Yes, sir. But I appreciate you, Jesse. I, I've <laughs> wanted to call in so many times. I happen to be on spring break right now, so I had a few minutes right on um, to contact you. But I just want you to know how much I appreciate you, and uh, you just keep doing what you're doing, and, Thank you so much for all you do. You're welcome, and thanks for calling me. And call me again, all right? Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Amazing. There's a line open, 888-7753-773-888-77. Jesse. Super chat. Super chat. Super, super, super chat. Matt, man Drama bought 10 coffees. Generous donation. Thank you. BuyMeACoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Yesterday, Mika Brzezinski from MSNBC said she went to Easter Mass and her pastor said Easter is about renewal and Jesus loves you unconditionally. Jesse, does, Je- does Jesus love her? What the... Uh, <laughs> triple exclamation mark. <laughs> he loved her, but not unconditionally. You must be born again. You must be. Before you enter into the kingdom of heaven... You must go and forgive. Then you can enter in. 
if it was unconditionally, you wouldn't have to be born again. You could just be an Allah U Abba person. Amazing. Thank you. Also, I'm buying me a coffee. No more thoughts. It says, I was listening to church on Sunday and something clicked. Are we actually dead and in hell? Exclamation mark. Question mark. Every human being, you can bank on this. That's money. Mm-hmm. Every human being that has anger and all do until they go and forgive is in hell. They're all dead. Your eyes are open. You're breathing a little bit, but you're dead. You're unconscious. You're dead. You're in hell. Every human being is dead. They, they're breathing, but they have no life. Isn't that amazing? Thank you. Also on Buy Me a Coffee, Mike Young. Hey, Jesse. How many years ha- I kept hearing that America is a nation of immigrants? And I just want to clarify with you to see what do you think about that. Um, what does nation mean that we whole, have a whole bunch of illegals here? <laughs> no, that uh, America was founded and built by immigrants. No, it wasn't. That's a lie. Nice. That's a lie. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Young. Yeah, thank you. Danny Moore bought a coffee. All right, Jesse and the lads, what do you and James think of willpower? Is it such a thing? Happy Easter to the whole crew. What do you think? Uh, I read about willpower in Frog and Toad (laughs) when I was a little kid because Frog and Toad were eating cookies, and Frog said, I'm done with cookies even though I like them and I'm tempted by them, I have I'm using willpower not to keep eating them. <laughs> <laughs> and did you stop eating them? At least for that moment. And then he went and ate the toad? <laughs> toad was shorter and fatter than frog. Uh, T- frog was taller and thinner. <laughs> no such thing as willpower. Anyone think they have will? They're lying to themselves. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Danny. Uh, Jay Len uh, donated a cash app, Bond JLP on cash app. Thank you. So did Chalice saying thanks. Thank you. Prep Ham Paul, monthly supporter, uh, subscriber on Rumble. Companies will lay people off, menu prices will spike, and in a couple short years, $20 an hour will be like $15 an hour now. Yeah. I have an idea. Educate yourself to get a job, trade, slash trade that pays an actual living wage. Exactly. Yeah. Good idea. I mean, thank you. He said Obama did the same thing with Obamacare, lowered medical benefit threshold from 40 to 30 hours a week. Then companies just lowered people's hours to 29 instead of 39, so they still didn't have to get medical. They still didn't get medical. Amazing. Yep. Human nature is evil. Human beings are animals, and they don't love one another at all. Zero love. That's why... We are commanded to love one another. Not that emotional love. Emotional feeling of love is not love. That's hate. And speaking of that, uh, the minimum wage thing. And speaking of the minimum wage thing, um, I want you to tell me, am I wrong about human nature being evil? Uh, uh, This is from Fox Business. Exempt from the new law on change that prepare and bake bread on site. Uh, what's the name of that bread? Panera? Panera bread. Panera bread was initially exempt until allegations surfaced that Gavin Newsom pushed for the exempt exemption to benefit a longtime donor who owned two dozen Panera bread. Panera bread. Panera bread. What does that mean? Panera locations. Newsom has denied the allegation in February. He said Panera would have to comply with the law. So according to reports I heard, a Newsom was trying to give his friends a break from this minimum wage stuff. But yet forcing on other people. Where's the love in that? <laughs> well, if that's true, yeah. that's um, amazing. Yeah, if it's true. Interesting. It is. It's all about self. And all the reason, if it's true, he would try to exempt his friends from it because they were donating to him. 
Yeah. This little campaign thing. And they're with this whole minimum wage thing, they're going in the opposite direction that they should be going. They should be freeing stuff up, not clamping down harder on people. They should be getting rid of minimum wage, enforcing the laws, you know, sending a lot of the immigrants back so that uh, there's not a surplus of workers. Right. So that their wa- the wages can go up naturally or, or down yeah. and the cost of living can go down. What a mess. Terrible. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, Prep Ham Paul. Don over on uh, Rumble donated a Rumble rant, Donnie Girl's idea. I prefer to buy from local s- store at a reasonable price and not slave made items. Amazon admitted to selling at a loss to trap consumers. What's that? She prefers buying local to at, a, at a reasonable price rather, right. rather than slave made items. So she'd rather go down the street to the store rather than buy from Amazon? Yeah, and stuff made in China by slaves or other countries. Oh, so... By more or less slave labor. So the people at the store, item is not made by slaves? Maybe not. Oh. And so, oh, it's made in China from Amazon, but not from the store down the street? This is a whole lot of assuming, based <laughs> on what she said, but... <laughs> <laughs> thank you, though. I don't quite understand, but thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. She also said, Donnie, girl's idea, we need silver to go way up to crush the Chinese Communist Party who devalues it to make their electronic products cheaper to make. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, appreciate <laughs> it. And uh, let me just double check over on... Oh, yeah. At this point, just call me Mike. Bought a coffee. Oh, and don't go and talk about my father. God is my friend. He made this world for us to live in and gave us everything. And all he asks of us is we give each other love. Marvin Gaye, God is love. Blue heart, salute, emojis. <laughs> thank you. Amazing. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and thank you, guys. I do believe that that is all for now. Amazing. Thank you all so much. Let me go to the first time a caller out of Florida, Russ. I mean, not Russ, but Scott. Scott, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. How are you? And uh, it's an honor uh, and a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate your call. Um, I am a business owner, um, and what people don't understand about the minimum wage is it's nothing but a tax. Yeah, that's all it is. You know, people. They're, okay, you're you're going to make more money. Well, that that fifteen dollar pizza is now twenty dollar pizza. Yeah, that thirty dollar shirt is now forty dollar shirt. However, being a business owner, I pay in more payroll taxes. I pay in more Social Security. I pay more unemployment taxes. You buy products, you pay more taxes because the price is higher. That's the only benefit of of uh, minimum wage raising is just the government's going to get more money. That's it. Amazing. That, that, yeah, it, it is amazing how that works, isn't it? But yeah, I mean that that that's just how that that's the reality of it, and the government's pushing it because they want more money. And that's the only reason that the government pushes minimum wage. And people don't understand minimum wage jobs are not designed to be a lifelong job. It was designed to get you started. Right. And people are making, you know, people are making a lifetime out of it, and that's not what it's designed for. And then when the government uh, gets your money, they don't use it to make the country better. They use it for their own personal need, own personal wants. But you know what's interesting, Scott? The employees don't think things through. They just go along with what, whatever they say. They don't really think, well, how will I really be affected by this? How will this hurt me? They don't think about that at all. No, and it, it hurts them in the long run. It doesn't help. It hurts. Right. It really does. Amazing. Scott, thanks for your call, man. I appreciate you. God bless you, sir. All right. You too. Thank you. 888-77-JESSE. Quick break. One line open. Back in a moment. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy, they're miserable, 
They have rough lives. They're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand. I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. Okay, folks, welcome back. 888-7753-7737. Jesse, quick announcements. Number one, the Hake Report is coming up at 9 a.m. this morning from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. The Hake Report. The guy with the good hair, you white. And then at 11 a.m., Joel Friday TV, he black, better known as Arkansas. Or Kansas, he's on fire. Dealing with relationships, dating and all that, and the truth and everything. You don't want to miss it. And at 12 noon, the American anchor baby. Flying high, unnatural energy given to him by God. And... A well-trained Google pilot. <laughs> you don't want to miss that. And he's on fire as well. At 12 noon Pacific time. You don't want to miss it. And don't forget for personal shout-outs, birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, whatever the occasion is, I'll do them for you on Cameo, C-A-M-E-O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson, all right? Personal shout out, happy birthday, whatever it is. And go to rebuildingtheman.com. Make a donation. We got a lot of work to do. We need your support. Re- rebuildingtheman.com and make your donation there, all right? Class donate. I do appreciate it. Thank you in advance. I was, you know, Scott from Florida mentioned all the taxes that this so-called minimum wage thing is supposed to be doing. And uh, my producer gave, reminded me of the income tax, inheritance tax, estate, estate tax, capital gain tax, sales tax, property tax. Where does it end? People, y'all, do what you want, of course. I would suggest you wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Practice being aware. Do little simple things like when you walk through a door, at least which in a physical sense. Be aware of your physical body walking through a door or getting in your car, turning on the initial, the motor there. Be aware. Open the door. Do little simple things like that. So you will start to take the step of waking up. You are asleep and don't know it. All right? Wake up. No more sleeping in bed. Wake up. Do what you want. But I recommend, and some people are, men and women, are waking up. Let me go to Donald, a first time call out of New York. Donald, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Donald. Yes. Can you hear me? I hear you now. Nah. Uh, I'm going to have you go into a bunch of stuff, but no, I ended up 
in an affair with my brother's wife. I met her when I was like 12 on their first date. I lusted after her like my whole life. Certain things happened. He became like a heavy drunk and assaulted me multiple times. I don't know. Me and her ended up started talking. And next thing I know, we meet at a hotel and it becomes like a whole thing. She's talking about getting a divorce lawyer and this and that and trying to move out. I don't know. And it just didn't go very well. I exposed the whole situation to the select few family members, like her parents, my mom, my dad passed. He died in my arms and whatever. If he was around, none of that would have happened. Um, but she ended up, he, my brother forgave her and whatnot, and they went to counseling, and now they have a daughter, but then my mom moved out there and whatever, and my whole entire, like, support system that I had, like, in the area kind of screwed and I it's a whole mess and now I'm with my dog yeah like it's a very complicated story but either way just I can't tell my other family members I don't want to out her and make my brother seem weaker or less than I don't know. And, and your question for if, your question for me is what? Um, I guess if I had a question, it would be like where in the Bible would I look to get some kind of guidance for this? Like, because clearly I was in the wrong. She was in the wrong. Like. The whole thing's a mess, but I don't really know how to go about it. Like, as far as praying, it just feels wrong if I, like, were to just simply ask for forgiveness because I clearly went out of my way and messed up and made a horrible decision, like, And then did that to my brother, like, and I don't know, or maybe just some words of wisdom or something. Okay. How old are you, uh, Donald? 32. 32. I want you to know that you're not guilty of that at all. It wasn't you. Um, God is not judging you for it because he knows that it wasn't you. It was something else that made a home in you, in your mind and emotion that drove you to go do that. It was never you. It definitely was like manifested, right. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. It, you were driven by the imagination because you identify with the thoughts and feelings. You thought it was you. It was not you. So do not judge yourself for it. Don't have any opinion about it. It was enough to know that it did happen. It should not happen, but understand why you did it. And if you don't judge yourself, you would never do it again. But if you judge yourself, you're going to find yourself doing it again or wanting to do it or whatever, right? But don't yeah. judge yourself for it, number one. Yeah. And then and God is not judging you, all right? All right. And, and then number two, you got to get over the anger. Well, let me just tell you this first. You should have never told your family members about it, your friends, or yep. anyone. You should have kept that sure. to yourself. Yep, you're spot on, because that's where it came from was anger. I got angry and that. 
and I have forgiven my mom before, but over time, I didn't forgive her after that, and I got to forgive her again. Yeah, you go to her because your mother has recreated your, her image. You're not yourself. Yep. And, and then your father was not able to deal with your mother, so he he loved you. It's just that he didn't know how to deal with the hell that's in your mother. Well, when she kicked him out, when I was at an early age, I yep. didn't see him from like 5 to 10. And yep. when he had issues to his... But yeah, I, I do have to re forgive her again yeah. after time passed. Just apologize for resenting her. She couldn't help herself. Her mother did it to her as well. And then you yep. you move on with your life. Don't worry about don't try to be around her anymore. Don't try not to be around her. But I want you to, to don't judge yourself. It was never, ever, ever you, man. It's this anger, the spirit. That made a home in you, and it made you think it was you, and that's why you did it. You would not have done that on your own. No way. And then again, from this day forward, never tell your family members, your person, or your friends or anyone your personal business. No. All right? Because hum- human, be- human beings are evil, and they are unhappy in their own lives, and they would take your personal business to try to bring you pain so they can feel better. Or they think they feel better, they don't, but they're thinking they do. So don't ever do that again, all right? Yep. And I want you to do uh, my silent prayer. You know about the prayer? Yep. Rebuildingtheman.com so God can bring you out of the thoughts, out of the hell of your imagination, and everything will start to change for you. It will change. All right. It would change for the good. But uh, again, don't judge yourself. You're not guilty of anything. You're not a sinner. You're not a saint. You've never sinned. You've never done anything wrong. It has always been something else inside of you that you identify with thinking that it was you. That makes sense. And I want you to read Romans 7. Romans 7. It says that I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. I have I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Of ourselves, Donald, we can't do anything of ourselves. Let go and let the let the nature of God take over. He's gonna change your heart from anger to love. And then he's going to delight, and that love is his light inside of you, and it's going to destroy the devil that made, and all his little demons that made a home in your imagination and emotions that's been driving you all your life. Those things will be taken away from you. That's the perfect verse. Like, I got to grab my Bible and mark it down. Yeah, Romans 7. Romans 7. Verse, uh, I don't know the verse yet. Romans 7. Either way. Yes, yeah, in Romans. Right yeah, it's in Romans 7, all right? Yep. Uh, verse 15 to 20. Okay. But listen, and the devil going to tell you, oh, that's crazy. That Don't believe. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. So don't believe what the thoughts are telling you. Yeah. All right? Yep. And if you stick with it, do the silent prayer every morning, every night, and God's going to bring you out of that imagination. He said, bring every thought into captivity. Those thoughts are not from him, and they are not from you. So you hear those voices that sound like you, it's not you. Yeah. And so just start right now a new life right now. Forget about the past. Forget about the future. There's no future, nor past. You start a new life right now. All right. All right. Let me know how it goes. Um, yeah, I'll stay in touch. And I'm a frequent watcher and big fan. 
which I promise you, Donald, if you start working on you, forget about everybody else. Take your eyes off others. Look within. Look at those thoughts. They're not you. And just work on you. It's going to be amazing, man. You're going to see how much. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you're, going, love it. you're going to see that God loves you. He has never judged you. He does not judge you because he, all your sins have been washed away. You're not a sinner. You just need to forgive so your heart can change from anger to love. Yeah, I really, I, I just got my Bible out the other day. It's been a little while. Definitely need to get back into it. And then when you read it, don't read to remember. Just read it, put it away. No, exactly. And the Spirit yeah. of the Father will reveal all things to you, all right? Yep. Anything else? Uh, no. And it was great just to talk to some, plus just to talk to you. I mean, you're a legend. And, and, and thank you. And I'll let, you, let me know how it goes, all right? Check back in and let me know how it goes. I will, man. And, and, and when you forgive your mother, mother, I'm sorry for resenting you. You can help yourself. I understand now. Um, however she act, don't react to her. Don't overreact. You just say, hey, I'm sorry for resenting you. Let her act crazy, whatever she does. But you forgive her, and then you start living your life. You'll be fine. Yep. All right, buddy. Let me know how it goes. All right, man. All right. Take care now. God bless. You too. Amazing. What a mess. Let me go to Ken out of Georgia. Ken been waiting a long time here. Let's see. Ken, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Jesse? All is well, sir. Thanks for calling. Yes, sir. I, I wanted to tell you, too, that song that you sang, Pussycat. Pussycat, uh, Pussycat, I love you. <laughs> yes, I do. You Tom and your pussycat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You and your pussycat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Tom Jones said that he, he really didn't like that song. <laughs> <laughs> but but he said it because it, re it reminded him of a little kid song. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, it, it, but it was a good song. It, it, it may have song, turned man. out to be one of, one of his most popular songs. It, it was, yeah, yeah. I used to hear it all the time on the radio. Yeah, I used to watch the show. <laughs> oh, yeah, all, me all too. Show. Sure did. Yeah, yeah. Is he still living? Yeah, he's still living, man. He's about eighty. Ooh, man, I think he's probably 80. No, wait a minute. Oh, he's a 90. He, he's up there, man. Yeah, I know. He but, was old when I was young. Yeah, yeah. He he, But he took good care of himself. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he took good, good care of himself. He he made a comment about Elvis. He said um, he said what took Elvis out was the drugs, you know. He said the drugs. He, said, yeah. he didn't get into, Tom didn't get into the drugs like that. Right. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah, nice. Yeah, man. Uh-huh. Go ahead. No, I just I just wanted to say, uh, yeah, you're right. We, it's good versus evil, man. Yeah, it really I is. I mean, just, yeah, just, it's just plain. It's just, it's just plain as day. Yeah. Good versus evil. People hate. And and it's a, it's amazing how the United States is getting more wicked quickly. Yep. Here it is, man. Yeah. But and, I mean they, they, they hate us that much. Yeah. They hate us that much. The the uh the Marxists, the, the communists, so they 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 plotted and planned on how how strategically how they wa wanted to do it. It's and so and so now they're after our children because they want to really indoctrinate them at an early age. And they're doing a Fine job of getting it done. It's amazing how they are taking over. They're taking over the 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 children, and they. But it's it's interesting too because the parent of the children don't even care. They don't see what's going on, and they just sit back and allow the socialist communist thing take over the children. They don't even try to protect their kids from it. Yeah, I, I I remember back in the day, 
Uh, I'm I'm 68. I remember back in the day the PTA, Parent Teachers Association. Right. Association. Yeah. Man, they would go in. They stopped that mess. It, yeah. Sure did. They would go in. Yeah, they would go in and stop it. But now it's it's no, it's no no <laughs> control. No, I mean it's like we can <laughs> we can tell your children this and you have to take it. Yeah. Yeah, you no, can tell have to take it. they can tell yeah. your children that you uh you you need your body part cut off. You a girl or you a boy or you're this or that. And Ooh. the parent they just do it and the parents let it happen. Yeah. What and then give them the drug and then give them the drugs and the medication. Yeah. Like I'm like, ooh man, that that is wicked. Yeah, it's that evil is- what they're doing, but I blame the parents for allowing it to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you yeah. have kids? Uh, yes, I do. I and, do have and, kids. Are you protecting them from all this mess? Yeah, as best I can, man. Yeah. I, you know, as best I can. Right you know? on. As, um, you know, I let them know. I said, look, this is how it was for your dad when I was coming up. Yeah. You know, originally I'm from, from Detroit. And, um, you know, you made a, you made a comment about the, the union. And um, I see where the unions really have destroyed the workforce. Yes, absolutely. You know, man. yeah, man. The, the unions, you know, as they as they kept asking for more money, more money for the workers, the cars started going up, man. Yep. yep. The price, and now and now, look where we at now. You know, what a mess. With, Yes, and that's Yeah, I know how the union works. I used to work for the union, inside with the union, so I understand how they work. What a mess. Mm-hmm. Thank you, yeah. man. It's good to hear from you. I got to run, yeah, but I appreciate like your call, Ken. All right, man. We got to get the Great White Hope back up in there, man. The Great White <laughs> Hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Call me again, buddy. Yeah, all right, brother. Take care of yourself. Uh, all right, now. Amazing. Uh, let me go to Quincy out of Colorado. There's a line open. Quincy, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Morning, Jesse. How are you? All is well, Quincy. Thanks for calling. All right. So I was down in Florida, went to go forget my I'm glad that I talked to you moons ago about it because you were right. I was I was scared. I kept like every day that was going by, I kept putting it off like, ah, I'll wait <laughs> till the next day. Ah. I'll wait till the next day. Yeah. So finally, I was like, no, Saturday, I got to do it. So I went and picked her up, took her to one of the local elementary schools where they got the little outdoor track that you that you can walk on. Right. So we were walking on the track, and I was just telling, I was like, Mama, you know, I started think, uh, kind of re- understanding that. Listen, let me take a break. Happen. Can you hold for me? Yeah. Yeah, I'll hold right on. Here. Okay. 888-7753-7731. One more hour to go. Quick break. Hake is coming in with the hate news, not the fake news, with a weird shirt on. And Savage Moment shirt. Whatever that is. I'll be back in a moment. 888-77-JESSE. With your phone calls and super chats. Back in a moment. I just want to say thank you for everything that you do. Um, you you absolutely changed my life for the positive, and I, I just want to thank you. I was um, 29 year old beta living at home with my mom, and just was living in fear and I in doubt, and I was I couldn't hold down a job. And then I found you, and I started listening. And I started just being more at peace, and um, I forgave my mom and I forgave my father. And it's like right after that, everything just changed in my life, and. I was able to get a good job and I moved out and I live on my own now and everything has just changed and I just want to say thank you and I appreciate you for spreading that message. It really is a positive message. Amazing. That's good, man. I want people to know God love us in ways that there are no words to express because you have nothing to compare it to, right? Stay with your silent prayer. You haven't seen anything yet. It gets better. Gaza's World Central Kitchen got seven killed by an Israeli strike. A 12-year-old shot and killed a 12-year-old and seriously injured 
uh, several others, uh, at least allegedly, in a Finland school shooting. And uh, the bird flu got one person in Texas. Whole lot of mess going on in the world. This is the end of hour two already of the J.S. Lee Peterson Show. Country and Western Tuesday, April 2nd, A.D. 2024. Stay tuned for Hour 3. JLP will be right back to your calls. There is one line open. You can call in right now during Hake News, not Fake News. After the Jesse Lee Peterson Show, of course, the Hake Report will be live for two more hours after the JLP Show. And then, of course, uh, Joel Friday TV after Hake from 11 to 12 Pacific Time, 1 Central, 2 Eastern. And then... uh, American Anchor Baby after that, from 3 to three to 5 Eastern, 12 to 2 uh, Pacific. Nice. American Anchor Baby on YouTube and various other platforms, including Rumble. Um, a Gaza feel bad story. The far left female run outlet, The Skim, reports that in morning is World Central Kitchen, the nonprofit group founded by celebrity chef Jose Andres. Yesterday, they said an Israeli airstrike killed seven of its workers in Gaza. Uh, The Israeli military said they're investigating the circumstances of this tragic incident. Incident. The video obtained obtained by news outlets showed the bodies of multiple people wearing clothing with WCK, World Central Kitchen's logo and passports from Britain, Poland, and Australia, potentially indicating the nationalities of the aid workers who are dead now. Uh, WCK is reportedly one of the few aid groups delivering food in Gaza where the evil UN experts warn, well, the the UN is evil. I don't know about the experts themselves. Warn, but probably, warn that hundreds of thousands of people are on the brink of famine, which is a mess. People die by, uh, number three, uh, diarrhea sometimes. A uh, Finland shooting. One 12-year-old child has died, according to CNN, Commie Nonsense Network, and two others seriously injured in a school shooting near Finland's capital, Helsinki. So said Finnish police reporting today. A suspect in the incident, also aged 12, and a student at the same school, that suspect, fled on foot but was later caught by the cops, according to a local broadcaster. Police have not yet provided details about the nature or severity of the injuries, nor what type of firearm they used, the person, the young man used, maybe a young man, I'm not sure. Uh, Finland enjoys a strong tradition of hunting, and its gun ownership rates are among the highest in the world, but school shootings are extremely rare, maybe because they have mostly white Finnish populace, not sure. Bird flu, watch out for the bird flu. Yesterday, according to the far-left female run outlet, The Skim, Health officials, so-called health officials, confirmed a person in Texas has been diagnosed with a strain of the bird flu after coming into contact with uh, dairy cows presumed to be infected. This is believed to be the first known human case linked to dairy cattle. Uh, Authorities detected this strain of bird flu in the animals last week at dairy farms in Texas, Kansas, and Michigan. The scared woman-led unchristian CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, federal organization, and other U.S. so-called health officials said the risk of infection for humans is low. Health experts do not expect the outbreak to affect food safety or supply. Hmm. Part of PCH collapsed, or at least the hot, the one. A new nightmare unlocked, according to the ladies of the scam, and partial highway collapse in California. AP reported, far left AP, motorists were creeping along the one, one lane. After part of high, uh, California's iconic Highway 1, State Route 1, collapsed after all that rain that took place in California. What a mess. As you heard, the evil minimum wage started in California. $20 is the hourly wage for about half a million fast food so-called workers in California. The latest increase, $4 higher than the overall state minimum wage of $15 an hour or $16 an hour. Wow. Applies to restaurant chains with more than 60 nationwide locations, as you heard from JLP first hour. Years-long fight by so-called workers, more like communist unions, to get better pay and improve working conditions. I'm James Hake. to stand up strong They 
Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show already. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773-888-77 Jesse. J E S S E. Jesse, my biblical question for this week, and it's a doozy. What connects you with the physical world? What connects you with the physical world? What an amazing question. What connects you with the physical world? Don't forget, you could be listening to the show live no matter what you're doing, working out. Uh, running, walking, making, uh, making, and, uh, and or having breakfast, lunch, and dinner anywhere in the world, we are heard around the world by everybody and their mama. And if you're black, everybody and they mama. But if you're white, everybody and their mama. Uh, you can be listening to the show on your iPhone, no matter what you're doing. You can podcast as well. But you can be listening by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500. 641-793-1500. Follow us on social media. Like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe, and blah, blah, blah. Y'all know what to do, right? Follow us and all that good stuff. Also, we're on... Um, JLP Talk on X, Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. And uh, we have a network that we're building here. And we're going to have 24 hour talk, all men, 24 hour talk on this network. So go to and subscribe and follow JLP Radio ne uh, Network, JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram, all right? I do appreciate it. Follow, like, subscribe, telephone, telegraph, tell your mama. It's Tuesday. It's the third hour of Tuesday. It is country and western Tuesday. Ah! Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to me. What dog? Me. <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Woo. Amazing. 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 888-7753-773. There's a lot. Two lines open. Someone want to jump in there, right? Let me go quickly back to Quincy. I had to put him on hold there for the break. Quincy went and forgave his mother. He was telling us about that. Quincy, so you went to Florida. You took your mother to this cool. You guys walking around the track and field place there. And what happened? So I just told her, I said, I always kind of felt like growing up that it felt like I didn't really know what was going on. Like I felt like sometimes things would work out. Other times it felt like stuff, just stuff was off. And I remember telling her that I just didn't really know what was going on. And I realized now that that was because I had a false identity that I got through you and my grandma. Yeah. So what was funny, Jesse was when I said that she was like, yeah, you really weren't yourself, but she tried to flip it and focus on like when I ran away from home and when I wouldn't, cut the grass like my stepfather told me 
she started trying to like change it to that to make it seem like it was about to be all about me and my fault. Yeah. So I remember saying, well, wait a minute, I don't want to get off the track. I want to stay on what I'm saying to you. So I just told her, I said, look, I realize that what's been happening is I've been judging reality. I've been judging my thoughts. Yeah, I understand that my father wasn't around. And she's like, well, I told him that he could have a relationship with you. I was like, well, he was weak because he didn't know how to deal with my grandma. So he didn't know how to deal with you to basically tell you, no, it doesn't matter what you want. This is what I'm going to do. Yes. So I realized that that weakness in man what was is what kept me from having my true identity. So what I did, we were walking. I said, well, this part, Mom, I need you to stop because I need to look you in the eyes. What I want to tell you is I was wrong for resenting you. I was wrong for judging you. I was judging you because I was trying to make myself feel good. And I realized that judgment is not mine, it's God. So I was wrong for hating you. Nice. As soon as I said it, Jesse, I felt like it's just like you described it. As soon as I said it, it, the rest of it, the rest of the conversation didn't even matter. I just remember we kept walking around the track. We went around like nine or ten times. But everything else that she was saying after that, it was like it didn't even register or matter. Right on. It was just like you said it would go. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. And yeah. and now that the light is on, meaning that the heart has been changed from anger to love, that's the light of God. He's now going to shine it on the imagination, the thoughts. All thoughts are all lies all the time. And I want to encourage you from this point forward, maybe from the point that you forgave it, but from this point forward, you just watch those thoughts and stay practice staying present, staying conscious, yeah. staying one mind on the minds, the one mind with God, and He's gonna destroy the darkness of the imagination. This thing you've been living in all your life, you escape when your mother traumatized you, but you gotta practice being present, and the and the evil spirits in your mind and emotions, the so-called good ones or bad one. They are going to have a hissy fit. They're going to yell and scream. And how long will this take? This is too hard. Why me? I'm going to give it up. Don't believe any of it. Yeah. And he will destroy that old nature. And you will give you, he will give you a new mindset, a new nature. And you'll have paradise on earth. Yeah, I appreciate everything, Jesse. And real quick, just thank you for writing Scam. Because I had just finished reading that the week before I went to Florida, and I liked how you just laid out as far as realize the natural order of God, right? Go and forgive. Yes. I like how you just laid it out step by step because it just it kept me even when it was time to face her. Nothing was there. Were no thoughts trying to creep in telling me, "Oh, this isn't going to work. Oh, you're not going to be able to do it." It just it was wonderful just being present and just letting it happen. Right it was, on. It was wonderful. Nice. Amazing. Well, Quincy, yep. stay with it because now you're going to have people turning against you. You're going to have yep. people trying to hurt you with your private business because they know your business and, and they're going to act like they're better than you. But you just wish them well. Don't get angry at them. Don't argue with them. Yep. You just stay on the straight and narrow. You'll be fine. Right on. I appreciate you, Jesse. Thanks right. so much for everything. You're welcome. Amazing. Amazing. 888-77-JESSE. Before I go back to the phones, let me just, uh, speaking of mothers, but not, but yeah, all. This is from, talking about taking a joke too far. This is from NDTV. This is amazing. In China, China, in China, an employee at a government-affiliated institution has been accused of poisoning her pregnant colleague has been accused of poisoning her pregnant colleague. The employee took the bizarre step because she did not want her colleague to take a maternity leave as she could not manage the increased workload alone. Isn't that amazing? Of course, it's in DTV, this woman is going to take off from work, a um, uh, uh, pregnancy leave, maternity leave. And this woman like, uh-uh, I can't do all this work by myself. What the? You want to go have a baby? 
And I had to do all this work. And according to the report, he poisoned her. <laughs> Don't tell me that the human, human beings are not evil. Human beings are not kind at heart either. No, that, I'm telling you, that's a lie. You must be born again. You must be born again. And I've said to you over and over again that my country is no longer in tears of thee. I know people have gotten upset at me because I said my country is over. I ain't talking to you no more. You saying the country is gone. It is gone. And it's going to get worse. You think it's bad now? And it is. They have been pushing anger and calling it love, even the Christians. Oh, Jesus anger, not that kind of anger, not human anger. Human anger is of the devil. And as a result of being pushing it, it's everywhere now. And Satan is taking over the big demons up there. Big devils over the little devils are taking over. This is from Politics Brief. Talking about my country is no longer tear to thee, of thee. I never thought this had happened. Amazing. This is from Politic Brief. Three individuals identifying themselves as the FBI showed up at the home of an Oakland woman reg regarding Facebook posts that were allegedly critical of Joe Biden. It is not clear what Facebook post triggered the visit. Watch this from X. So you said you were with the FBI? What we'd like to do is just have a conversation with you about some social media posts that you've made. I would like you to later talk on with my lawyer. I'll get back to you. And tell him that Facebook flagged me for posts. Uh, Facebook gave us a couple of screenshots of so we no longer live in a free country and we can't say what we want. We live in America. Exactly. So it's kind of weird that you want to come talk to me about me exercising my freedom of speech. Okay, so you have concerns about my personal opinions? I'm definitely not going to have a talk with you. This is Rola Abdel Jawad in Stillwater, Oklahoma. This is America. Amazing, huh? That wasn't, if it's true, and I have no reason to doubt it at this point, that wasn't Russia, that wasn't in China, that was in the United States of America. And election times are coming in November. You haven't seen anything yet. These people were trying to stop the great white hope from getting in. I don't know why they went to her house, but you haven't seen anything yet. I would suggest do what you want. You overcome fear. Anyone that has fear has anger. Anyone that has anger has fear, and fear is not of God. Anyone that has fear, because the devil is of fear, anyone that has fear is the devil. You're the devil. That was in America. United States of America. In case you didn't hear it, according to reason, one agent said in the video, Facebook gave us a couple of screenshot, screenshots of your account. A second agent added, we do this every day, all day long, all day long, all night, all day long we do this. It's just an effort to keep everybody safe and make sure nobody has any ill will. Nobody has any will, ill will. Are they doing that for Trump too? Anyone that says something bad about Trump, are you knocking on their doors? Just want it out loud.
anyone knocking on their door. It's time to wake up, America. If not now, when? How long will you sleep? How long, how long will you be the walking dead? How long will you take things personal? And why is it you don't know that taking things personal is evil? That emotions are not you. You're not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. You're not your body. Let me go to Russ out of New Jersey. Russ, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. How are you? All this well, Russ. Thanks for calling. I wanted to thank you. You opened my mind up, and I was not able to see hardly anything until I forgave and started to move forward. Yep. And it's helped me tremendously. Well, Russ, if you stay with it, buddy, it's going to become clearer, clearer and clearer and clearer. Well, I thought that since you helped me so much, I could help you. You sound like you're in a lot of despair right now. What do you mean? With uh, the world and the way it is right now. Oh, no. Inwardly, Ross, I feel nothing about it at all. I think I just see what's going on. But in all honesty, personally, I'm not moved by it. But I see the evil that's happening. Well, if I explain it to you, could could you maybe listen and see if this might be a way forward? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Um, let's see. Where should I start? Uh, people, people are lost right now. You know that. And um, but I think the reason that we're lost has all to do with the Bible, but not like the words in the Bible, because you have always said that. God does not speak words, right? Right. And the reason God does not speak words is because we lost that privilege when he came down and gave us the Ten Commandments, and after that, we weren't able to hear him anymore, right? Well, the reason that God, God, is, uh, God speaks, God reveals things to you, that's his well, I'm going. talking about in Whereas the olden days. Satan, Satan talked to you. In the olden days, God used to maybe speak to you, but and he spoke to Moses in the Ten Commandments. And after the people didn't listen then, he had to come forward with, with Christ to actually show us his love by putting Christ on the cross and letting him die in front of us so that we would know how true God's love was. Nice. I know what you do mean you by that. Do you agree with that? I do. I understand that. How- now, let me finish, because I'm not quite done. If we lost our hearing because of Moses, and we didn't listen to his word in the Old Testament, and we aren't believing our eyes by seeing Christ die on the cross, the next thing we're going to lose is going to be our eyesight, because we are not going to be able to believe what we're seeing. And if we don't find forgiveness and figure out a way for everybody to forgive everybody, each in all things, not just your wife, not just your mother, not just your father, but for all sides, yeah. every opposite. Yeah. The God did not make the world with hate and love. He made it with dark and light. Dark and light is where the war is. The people that want to run the dark, want all the energy that they can get to run their technology. The people in the light see the nature being destroyed, and they know that that's what they need to survive on. And to be able to move forward, they're going to have to figure out a way to be able to eat and live on this earth with technology. That's where the real war is. Amazing. Well, uh, one thing that, uh, for some reason, my head says it went out. It just obviously disappeared. Um, for one thing I do want to say to you, uh, Russ, I understand what you're trying to say, but do not believe what you see with your physical eyes. Oh, I, I don't. I uh, only point. believe what you see with your spiritual eyes. I understand that. Amazing. Because of time, but I got to run. Thank you so much, Russ. Stay Thank with you. it. Stay with it. Stay with it. All right. Thank you. I will. All right, buddy. Amazing.
888-7753-773. Let me go to Susan, a first-time caller from Michigan. Wow, somebody's coming in to adjust my headset here. Um, Let's see here. Susan, welcome to the show. um, You're on the air. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. And speak up a little bit, Susan. Okay. Um, Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, Why I'm calling is I want to know where in the Bible can I look to find a a place where I can forgive myself. Um, I I had a child out of wedlock and raised him myself. Um, and he found his through DNA his father's side of the family, and they reject him. Um, and. So so I feel guilty about that. Um, I was trafficked, and that's how I got pregnant. You were trafficked? Yes. What do you mean by that? Oh, gosh, it's a long story. Um, I'm, I was basically kidnapped. Um, I was in a restaurant, and the man I was with went to the bathroom and another man sat next to me and put a gun to me and told me I was going to be his girlfriend. So uh, then he started trafficking me. Oh, how old were you at the time? Uh, well, when I met this man, I was 17, uh-huh. 17 or 18. Oh, okay. Amazing. And um, so... Yeah. Um, How long did they traffic you? Um, I was trafficked for about a year, and then I was pregnant. The man that had me thought the child was his. So he stopped beating me and stopped trafficking me when I started showing. Um, and then when my son was three months old, I was able to escape. With my baby. Oh, what a mess! Yeah, it was a mess. Well, I'm glad you're better now. You're doing fine now, right? Oh yeah, but I, I just don't know how to get over this feeling of, you know, what what can I do to feel better about this family that rejected him naturally because. You know, their father, you know, they feel, you know, they have a problem with their father having, you know, extramarital sex. And, I mean, they don't even know how this happened. Oh, okay. This was like, you know, just. And so your question is, how do you forgive yourself? Yes. Yeah, uh, what, what can tell, I look in the Bible for um, somewhere to, you know? So describe the person that you need. Who is who is Susan that you need to forgive? Who is that person? Oh, well, it's that's a person that never wanted to hurt anybody. But who is Susan? Okay. Uh, I feel I'm a good person. What's good about you? Well, like I said, I never intentionally wanted to ever hurt anybody. So, um, so you believe that you so you believe you are a feeling. Oh well, yeah, I'm a feeling. And how can you be a feeling? Because sometimes you feel good and sometimes you feel bad, right? Yeah. Are you both feelings? Sure. So sometimes you're a good Susan feeling 
And sometimes you're bad, Susan, feeling. Probably more bad feeling. It's very interesting. And why do you make yourself feel bad? Well, I guess I um, probably, you know, that probably comes from childhood. But how do you, how, who made Susan feel bad? Well, I'm not sure if Susan made Susan feel bad or (laughs) her parents did it. (laughs) I mean, we were not guided. I understand. Uh, and so, so sometimes, Susan, you are a bad feeling. You are sometimes a good feeling. Who else are you? Um, a survivor. Susan is a bad feeling and a good feeling sometimes, <laughs> a survivor. Who else? Yeah. <laughs> Who else are you? I, I I can't answer that. You know why? No. Because none of those things are you at all. You're not a bad feeling or a good feeling. You're not uh, or a guilty person or innocent person. You are not a sinner or a saint. You're not your emotions or non-emotions. You're none of those. You're not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. You're not your body. You have identified with all these evil, fake identities, not you, that's inside of you, and it's not you at all. And those are the things, which is hell, that is trying to make you feel guilty and feel bad. It's not you at all. God is not holding anything against you. Susan is not holding anything against Susan because there is no Susan. Only the devil in your imagination is making you think and feel that way, and you think it's you. There is not one reason Susan should be feeling bad or good about anything. Because everything you've done was never you. Something else working through you to make you feel that way, telling you to feel that way, by making you think that way and making you feel that way. You would never do that to yourself. Well, then how how can I forgive? You, you talk about forgiving your parents. And how do you forgive all those people besides parents that did harm knowingly. And the same thing that's driving you to make you think that you are a good person or a bad person or this person or that person, a guilty person and all that, it's the same thing that's driving them to cause them to do what they have done. And that's why you must forgive them. And when you forgive them, God will forgive you and he'll make you free. And you will have no past or no future. You will only have now. He will bring you well, out I, of... I, Go ahead. I understand I'm supposed to forgive them, but I don't. I just... I just... I, well, I don't know how. By, by getting to know yourself and the things you have done, you didn't want to do something else making you do it. Same thing with them. We understand that. Can you hold for me, Susan? Yes. Hold on. Treasure chest is now open on D Live. I'll be back in a moment for your super chats and everything.
The Hake Report is coming. My mind is back. I can hear. I can hear. Amazing. Um, the Hake Report is coming up at the top of this hour. The Hake, H-A-K-E Report, dot com, is coming up at 9 a.m. from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And then from nine from 11 to noon, Joel Friday TV, he black. At 12 noon, Monday through Thursdays. And then at 12, well, Joel's from 11 to 12 a.m. Pacific time. And at 12 noon, the American Anchor Baby. The American Anchor Baby. All right? At 12 noon, a genius. I was just so scared. A genius. You don't want to miss it. Somebody did something right. And don't forget to go and make a donation to my nonprofit. Y'all see the work we got to do? You've been helped, so help us help, help others. And if you're working on being helped, help us to help others. Make a donation. What the? And follow us on social media. Like, follow, subscribe, ring the bell. We're on rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson and cozy dot TV dot TV slash JLP where Christ is king. Oh, let me just mention this coming Thursday. If the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. If the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. Miss form the first Thursday night of every month for men only. So come on down, guys. This is April already. And ladies, it's your meeting, your form, it's the third Thursday night at uh, 7 p.m. for ladies only. So go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-BOND to make a donation for Cowboys arrived in town on Friday. Arrives in town on Friday. What's a cowboy? A, a, a person on a horse? Yeah. Oh. I'm arriving in town this Friday? I know. I thought you were going to get in the riddle. Oh. Not the cowboy is not coming. Yeah. Oh, so the ri- riddle is... It's not dirty, is it? No. Oh. We can do that. Oh, a cowboy, a, a cowboy arrived in town on Friday, staying for two. <laughs> Sorry. A cowboy arrived in town on Friday. This one, Hassan asked me this, all of us that. I don't know what it is, but I know it's so simple, I'm missing it. A cowboy arriving to town on Friday, stays for two days, and then leaves on Friday. How? He stayed for two days. He arrived on Friday, stayed for two days, and left on Friday. Anybody know the answer to that? Do you know Hake? Yeah, I'm not going to let on. Oh, you do, do know? Yep. You know Anchor Baby? You don't know yet? No. <laughs> Anchor Baby doesn't know. I was lost at first. I wonder if Dior Friday know he would that. Probably. You know Dior? <laughs> Sean, you know? Sean knows. Joel Friday, he black, he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody know what that is? Let me know. One last time. Cowboy arrives into town on a Friday. He stays for two days and then leaves on Friday. How? Let me go back to Susan in the meantime. I would be remiss... Not to mention that the Great White Hope posted his bond of $175 million in New York. Oh, amazing. Egg in, in uh, Vegeta's face. Leti- amazing. Letitia's. What? Letitia James's face. Egg in Letitia James's face. What'd you call her? Lamita. <laughs> or something. They said Vegeta. Vegeta. <laughs> egg in Vegeta's face. She got egg all over her face with a little smirch. Let me go quickly back to Susan. Susan. Yes. So 
you got to forgive them because they, they damaged your body, but they didn't touch your soul, your spirit. You are causing problems for your spirit by not forgiving them. Well, how do I have my son forgive me? Apologize for, for what? I, how do I have him forgive me? I've apologized to him several times. Forgive you for what? For the way he was born. Oh, just say, son, I can help it. It was a raw way for you to be born, and it was raw, and I'm sorry. That's all you need to do. How old is he now? Oh, he's a man. He's grown. He's and, and if he doesn't forgive you, you apologize for that. I had no control of that. That was raw. I'm sorry. And then you go on to live your life and leave him in his hell until he's ready to forgive. There's nothing you can do about him forgiving, and you have no reason to feel guilty that he's unwilling to forgive at all. It's not in your hands anymore. It's in his hands to forgive. And some people love living in their misery. They love their hell, so you can't bring him out. He got to come out if he wants to come out. You need to move on and live your life. That, well, thank you very much. That was out of that was out of your control, so you had nothing to do with that. And if you're a grown man, he should understand that. You told him what happened. You're sorry that it happened that way. That's all you can do about it. And if he forgive, he'll be free. Because it doesn't matter how he was born, he is born. He's here on earth. What do you think about that? Well, I think uh, I think he forgave me up until he found his DNA paternal match, <laughs> and uh, because they rejected him, that opened hope. Would tell him to forgive them. Yeah. They can't help themselves. You can't make somebody else be right or do right. You have to take responsibility and forgive so you can be right and have an amazing life. Have, yeah. Have you forgiven your mother, Susan? That's a funny thing. I I loved my mother. I hated my father. But I, after she passed, there were papers that she wrote describing how she never liked her kids. Yeah. She had a whole bunch of them, and she never wanted kids. <laughs> and so that, you know, that <laughs> how do I now, you know, I understand how she could hate her kids because she didn't want them. And, and that's why she turned you against your father. She hated, oh, the, she hated the children no, and the he, father. He, he did that himself. Did what? He turned all the kids against him. He didn't want kids either. Well, forgive him, Susan. They couldn't help it. Yeah. You got to, so that you can be free right here on earth, you can have paradise, Susan. You can have perfect peace. God is not holding anything against you, so don't you hold anything against anyone else. God is not blaming you for anything. It was never you. It's the spirit of evil that made a home in your mind and your imagination and emotions, and you thought it was you. Uh, and likewise, every human being on earth has the same problem, your father and your mother. Their mothers and parents did it to them. You must forgive right. so you can be free. And forgive the people that, that what do you call they? What do you call that? Trafficked at you. They couldn't help it. They were driven by evil as well. Oh, yeah. Susan, there's never, ever, 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 but never, 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 ever a reason to be angry. No matter what situation comes, there's never a reason to be angry. Well, I don't feel angry. I mean, I, I don't feel angry. I feel sad. Well, you can't be sad unless you're angry. Sadness is a child of anger. And you didn't love your mother 
you resented your mother, but you think you loved your mother. Here's what I want you to do, and I want you to let me know how it goes. Will you do that for me? I'll try. I want you to do the silent prayer. You know about the silent prayer? Um, I just heard you talking about it. This is the first time I've really, you know, listen. Usually I listen to you before, but usually you're talking to men. And um, so where's the silent prayer? I talk to all men and women. I counsel with men and women, all people around the world, all races and everything. Go to rebuildingtheman.com slash prayer. Okay. And I want you to start doing that. And it was, things have started to become clear to you. God would bring you out of these false identities, out of your thoughts, and things will okay. be made clear. And you're going to have an, and you will have no past or future. You will have an amazing life right here, right now. Thank you. So start doing the prayer and call me back with any questions or anything about it or anything else. All right. Thank you. Okay. All Thank right, you so, very much. So work on you. You, you apologize for your son. If he doesn't want to forgive, leave him in his hell. Don't feel a thing about it. Because there's nothing you can do about it. It's on him now. Okay, thank you. Let me know how it goes, all right? Okay, I got to go. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Super Chat. Super Chat. Super, super. Super Chat. Over on, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. DLive.tv slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Aries 1 donated a couple of diamonds. No message. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Stan 16 and with a diamond. In the old days, kids were whipped. Whoosh. Kids had respect. That's right. <laughs> sure. I, I, I remember those days. What the? Thank you. Aries 1. Aries' son bought five coffees on buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Trump, quote unquote, create jobs. Feel good. Minimum wage go up, feel bad. <laughs> Government raise taxes, feel bad. Set up. It's not realistically feasible for all 8 billion human beings on Earth to be self-sufficient entrepreneurs. It just isn't, he says. Why not? <laughs> well, I guess somebody got to work for you. Yeah, you got to do the job. Right, but if you have a job, you're still being self-sufficient. True. If you have a job, you're taking care of yourself. Treat that as your business. That's right. Treat other people's business as though it's your own, and one day you have your own, you treat you just you just stay on that straight and narrow. Absolutely, thank you. Yep. Uh, WD forty one donated one two three four five six seven eight diamonds. No message. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Cactus eater bear with a diamond. What's a new pussy cat? Whoa, whoa! Is Tom Jones? Ha ha. <laughs> What's thank new? You. Not what's a new, what's new. Yeah. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's new, pussycat? I love you, pussycat, pussycat. I love you. <laughs> yes, I do. You and your pussycat friends. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Amazing. Indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Cactus Eater Bear. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Donnie Girl's idea donated a, a clarification on uh, Rumble. I look for Made in the USA label. Hardware stores sell American-made snow shovels for $35, and Walmart sells $7 sho shovel from China. My snow shovel still works. And wow. The and the cheap one broke after the first use. Amazing. What a mess. Thank, thank you. you. For the Rumble rant. Yeah, thank Urinal you. Urinal Chills is a subscriber on Rumble, the weight off your shoulders after you forgive mama, you overcome all fear no words can describe. Then when you go to your father and forgive him, maybe the first and only time you see your father cry. Nice. Salvation is about live about a return to the father. It's about a return to the father. Amazing. Thank you. Someone bought a coffee. Hey, guys, thanks for all you do. Wanted to ask why Jesse keeps quoting Cain. Am I my brother's keeper? What the? Uh, <laughs> thanks. Hope all is well. I'm not my brother's keeper. When you become strong or weaker, I'm not my brother's keeper. I don't know if that's the lyrics, but it's a yeah. nice song. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. Right on. Thank you.
and why chill boy bought a coffee. Jesse, have you ever gone into the silent prayer while on the toilet to assist the removal of demons? It's amazing. Highly recommend it. I would not respond to that. Nice. Thank you. Top contributors on D-Live. WD- Thank you, though. No. Yeah, WD-41, Aries 1, Cactus Eater Bear, Stan 69, Misty, taking care of business. Thank you for the ice cream, diamonds, and ninja guinis and support. Oh, Shout amazing. out to all of you. And thank you, guys. I do believe... Oh, yeah. Elizabeth Marie bought a coffee. Hank, I love your shirt. Is that Jesse looking at planets? Uh, quadruple question mark. Heart smiley emoji. Yeah, it's a... It, I got it from Get a Job's Teespring. I didn't know it was me. I'm, I've been looking moment. at this for a while. Yeah. But it is me from what Get a Job. Savage moment. Yeah, uh... Teespring.com slash stores slash get a job is where I got it. What? I a little Teesp- louder? Teespring.com slash stores slash get a job. Support get a job. Get a job is amazing. I don't what? know if it's still available. Oh. Maybe there's some. There, I do see a hoodie for sale, a green hoodie with this design on it. Or you can get various colors. Yeah, support him. Nice. Amazing. And thank you, guys. I do believe that now that is all for now. Thank you all so much. I do appreciate it. Let me do this really fast. While Hank is here, I'll be remiss not to do this. And I don't want to be remiss. True. Independence. Donald Trump posted the $175 million bond. And it's funny. At first, it was like a billion, right? A half a billion. A half a billion. $464 million dollars, something like that. And now now that it's 175 million, it makes it seem like chump change. <laughs> I know. It's still like out of control. It's, it's still ridiculous. a lot of money, mm-hmm. but it doesn't seem like a lot of money now. <laughs> Isn't that weird? It is. Anyway, Donald Trump posted the $175 million bond in New York civil fraud case late on Monday. The bond payment came as state officials were prepared to seize Mr. Trump Properties to fulfill the judgment. Watch this from ABC. You are your pussy cat slow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You are your pussy cat wait. You can't find it? But anyway, keep looking to let me know. We'll play it. Um, egg in the face of Tatila. <laughs> <laughs> you said a different name each time that you've said it. And what's her name? Letitia James. Egg, egg in the face of Letitia James. She's sitting up there like this. <laughs> he's like straight. He's sitting for the podcast listeners. He's sitting straight up and scowling. Remember when Trump like an would overly be going stern to- black female. <laughs> Remember when Trump would be going to court. She got a seat at the end at the row where he had to walk. Everybody can see her. The media can focus on her. And she's like all gleeful that she's trying to hurt a son of God. Terrible. And she thought for sure she's going to go down there and take the white man's stuff again. (laughs) (laughs) I guess it's now it's ready to go. Is it? Watch this from uh, Independent. I want to turn to some breaking news now. Former President Donald Trump has secured a $175 million bond in his New York civil fraud case. Trump secured the bond through Knight Specialty Insurance Company. Last Monday, a panel of judges from New York's appellate division granted the former president, his adult sons, and two former Trump organization executives a 10-day stay of the $464 million judgment in their civil fraud case and permitted them to post a reduced bond of $175 million. Primarily, it means their assets are not going to be seized at the end of the week by the New York Attorney General, Ariel. Posting the bond guarantees that Trump can pay at least a portion of a civil fraud judgment that runs to uh, nearly a half billion dollars. Uh, And the appeals court allowed Trump to guarantee that judgment with a, a reduced but still hefty $175 million bond. And according to a court filing, uh, the, the Trump was able to secure that bond through a Los Angeles-based surety. Amazing. Based. Uh, what? I said based. That's right. <laughs> Basically, all I've done 
is keep my promise. That's a fact, Jack. Congratulations to the great white hope. Don't mess with Trump. You can mess around, but not with Trump. Amazing. Congratulations, Mr. Great White Hope. Let me go to, is it Kamala or Camilla? Kamala. Uh, Kamala. Kamala. Not, not the so-called vice president, right? I don't think so. Oh, it may be from the vice president. Nice. Kamala. No. No. <laughs> Kamala, not Cam- the vice president. <laughs> nice. My bad. Welcome. You're on the air. Thanks. Um, did anybody answer your riddle about the horse? Uh, no. A cowboy, a cowboy arrived into town on a Friday. He stayed two days and then leave on Friday. How? Is the horse's name Friday? Ooh. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. Amazing. <laughs> that is... How did you know? Uh, I just guessed. <laughs> wow, good yeah. guess. That's right, right, Hassan? Yeah, good guess. <laughs> good for you. I'm glad I took your call. Cool. Um, anyway, the Great White Hope is coming to Wisconsin today, and I'm hoping to go to his rally, but I don't know. There's supposed to be a big blizzard coming, but we'll see. Is it snowing now? No, but, like, <clears throat> um... It's getting close, but oh, okay. we'll see how it goes. But yeah. I'm hoping to drive up there and see him. I, I hope so. That would be amazing. Anyway, I just wanted to talk quick. Um, I voted, and on our ballot, we have something called unrestricted delegation um, as an option for both of the presidential nominees, Democratic and Republican. Right. And I never heard of that before. Me either. And it was so bizarre, and I looked into it, and apparently a group of people got together, um, people from the left left and of colored people, you know, that the minority group got together and decided they were going to protest Biden's handling of Palestine. So they're just going to put another option on there to not vote for him. Nice. It's so weird. Well, then they put it on Trump's too, you know. Oh, but bad. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I no, I've not heard of that before. Well, we'll see you. I, you know, we'll have, have a wait and see attitude to see how this whole thing turn out. And uh, if ever we needed the great white hope, we need him now. That's for sure. Will you tell him tonight? Will you tell him I said hello? Oh, sure thing. And tell him I said that he is the great white hope. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, let, let me know how it goes tonight. Call me later. All right, will let, do. All right, take care now. Thanks, Jesse. All right. Oh, amazing. Nick said that that riddle, riddle yeah. had him Go going. On. He couldn't figure that one out. <laughs> it never occurred to me the horse name was Friday. What the? Amazing. That was from, from Hassan, folks. I am so out of time. The hate report is coming up now. I would have been remiss not to bring up the Donald Trump situation. The hate report is coming up now. Get on that straight and narrow path, folks. Stay there. It's going to be rough. I can't tell you the number of people coming. Oh, it's just too hard. I can't make it. How long will this last? This thing is dying. All false layers and layers of false identities are disappearing. All right? Be patient. Do the silent prayer, forgive, become aware, and let the thing die. Stay conscious. Practice being conscious. The Hake Report is coming up now. After the Hake Report at 11, join our Friday TV. And after join our Friday TV, the American Anchor Baby. Thank you all. Go make the donation at rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-BOND. Justin out of Georgia. Uh, Roy, Rory, a first-time caller out of Florida, Emmanuel out of Canada, and somebody just dropped. I am so out of time. I'll be back tomorrow to Lord is willing and the creeps don't rise. Manhood tomorrow. All right. Have a good one, folks, and thank you for everything. 
Amazing. Amazing. Boy, you better stand up and up. Put your hand up and hut. Because if you don't, then we lose. And then we got to hear the fake news. Whoa. Here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. I notice after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business. But because they've been told that if you don't get a loan from the bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true, it's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the Father. 